thank you for joining me today. Yes, you are right. You can see what is on, on uh, at my back. Today is a special program, but it's still the Bible series, because today just happened to be a very special day for me and my family and for the ministry, online ministry that God has committed into my hand. And that is why I've decided that in the spirit of today, I'm going to do, rather than cancel the episode, that I'm going to do a very special episode. So today, like I said, today is very, it's a landmark. It's a good day for me. A very close loved one is celebrating today and we are celebrating uh, as a family. And today also is a landmark, as you know, I do, in addition with teaching on Maranatha Teaching Channel, I also share with you songs. Today you will have seen that I've shared a song titled, and you can see, me, see it behind me, You Know Me. Now, this is a landmark um, music that we're sharing with you because in our Maranatha original song series, this is the 50 H song that is number 50 song in that series that's the one we shared i mean obviously there are some songs that are not in that series you remember there are some couple of songs we did during my mom's 80th birthday they are not part of that series but we have this series of songs that we share on maranatha original song series and this is the golden edition this is the golden episode this is the golden song so at that level we want to thank god i mean this all began just over two years ago when we started sharing this song and now that Lord has led us to share the 50th song obviously I always do this with my nephew with uh, my producer Dio that is Sega Beats Pro and um, and that that is what we've done today in addition to other things that we're celebrating now it is important it is a landmark we're thanking God for the grace and for the opportunity but the reason why i want to do this just like i've always done on this platform is because for me it is a it is an opportunity for me to be able to share with you of the lost goodness of the lost kindness and for us to be able to learn i'm learning all the time so the reason i'm saying this is because i just felt this is an opportunity for me to share with you now i'm not going to tell you how i do this song i've done that in the past but i just want to take this opportunity for me to reflect and for all of us also to learn because this has been a journey the journey is still ongoing look i'm an amateur i'm not a professional singer okay but why do i sing this is tying into what we have been studying. You remember, we've been studying about the Bible. Now, if you go back a couple of months ago, we were talking about how to meditate upon the scripture. And one of the things we said, and if you can remember, if you can't go back, one of the things we said is that one of the ways you meditate upon the scripture is actually to sing the scripture. You know, there are so many songs out there today. In fact, unfortunately, quite a number of what goes for Christian music today are very very dubious i mean but you go back go and take some of those hymns that were written by our fathers i mean they are so rich in in doctrine they are so rich in the word of god and that is the reason why i sing in fact i've come to call it recently bible you know musical bible musical and if you look at video that i've done to show you how i do this music you will see that essentially a lot of this music are Bible put to music. So I call it Bible music. It's just, when I sit down to make music, it's just what I do when I'm preparing for a sermon. Okay, I take the Bible and I put them to music. And that is what brings me to the music we've done today. You remember that apart from our Maranatha original song series, which we're celebrating the golden episode today. Now, this music is actually based on Psalm 139, Psalm 139. And you remember a couple of days ago, I released another music, which was number 49, with my son called Talita Kumi. And that was essentially based on the story of Jairus, his daughter, and Jesus Christ. When Jairus went to Jesus to ask him to come and lay his hand upon her daughter so that she can be healed, so that she can live. And that was what we put that music to. Now, there are sometimes, uh, there, there's, in, in this series, there are some songs I call Bible singing. There are sometimes where I actually take a portion of the scripture and I sing them word for word. 
oftentimes from the King James Bible. I call those Bible singing. And we've done a couple of that. You remember we recently we did one on Psalm 113. Uh, in the past, we've done one on Psalm 28, 23, the, the Lost My Shepherd. We've done on, one in the past on John chapter 1. We've done one in the past on Ephesians chapter 1. And these are, you know, you are, you are taking a portion of the scripture. You are not changing any word. You are just singing them as it is in the scripture. I realize that it's helped me to be able to, to, to remember the scripture. But oftentimes, like this one we've done, it's not word for word. What I've done there is to read through Psalm 139 from verse 1. I believe I did from verse 1 to verse 9. And let me read it. Let me read it. Psalm 139 from verse 1. It says, O Lord, that thou hast searched me and known me. And you know the song started with, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. And that is word for word. Even though there are others that I didn't actually sing word for word. It started with that, O Lord, thou hast searched me. And known me, verse 2 says that thou knowest my down sitting and my uprising, thou understandest my thought afar off. And in this particular case, I also use other modern translation and I mismatch them. And you know, one of the important things about singing songs like this is that it's basically the scripture. So the power and the anointing that rests upon the Bible rest upon the song and singing those songs actually allow us the bible says this book of the lord shall not depart out of your mouth thou shalt meditate upon it day and night then thou will observe to do i mean this this is this is this is why we do this you you put this word to music and let me keep reading verse 2 thou knowest my dance sitting and my uprising thou understandest my thought afar off Thou compasseth my path and my lying down and at acquainted with all my ways. You can see all, if you listen to the music, this, these are the part that came out. Then it says, verse 4, For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it together. That was not actually, verse 4 and verse 5 was not actually in that song. Verse 5 says, Thou beset me behind and before and laid thy hand upon me. Those two verses were not in the song. Verse 6 says, Such knowledge is too it's too wonderful for me. You remember we say, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Okay? Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where do, where, whither, whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascended up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there, Thy hand shall lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. And you can see how we put those songs to, to, to music. But, but I'm reading this because, you know, this song, in this psalm, the psalmist was contemplating the deity, the power, the glory, the, the beauty of the Lord. And we are, we are living in a time now when we need to do this, because we are living in a time when things are very difficult. You know, the psalmist was saying that, look, if I make my bed in hell, if I ascend into heaven, if I go to the end of the sea, he said, if I dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, I don't know about you, maybe you feel like your bed is in hell. Maybe things are tough around you. Look, we pass through the valley of shadow of death. I have challenges that I face. I have things in my life that I would rather have different ways. There are challenges, okay, there are, there are sometimes affliction. There are sometimes there are pain. Now, but the psalmist was contemplating, rather than allowing this, this you know, flood, rather than allowing the issues around, me, around him to overwhelm him, he did something. He began to remind himself of the deity, of the goodness, of the glory, and of the presence of the Lord. He said, the Lord is there. You are there. In fact, in that song, there are two, one word that ref that comes again as again is this word, you know me. We'll come to that. But there was another word that came in at a point, you are there. And those are the two words I want to share especially with you today. That wherever you are, God is there. Okay, we must not allow the situation we are passing through to make us doubt the love and the presence of the Lord. The psalmist was saying he was contemplating upon the omni, 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 
omniscience of God, the omnipotency of God, and the omnipresence of God. Omniscience of God in the sense that God knows everything. Omnipotency of God because God has power to do all things. And the omnipresence of God because God is there. No matter where I am, no matter what I'm passing through, God is there. Look, the most important thing is to know that I am where God is and God is where I am. Now, that does not necessarily mean that things are bed of rose, but it is comforting to know that God is there with me. Okay, the Bible says, even though I pass through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are there with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So the psalmist was contemplating on, on this mighty God, this God that knows all things, this God that has all power, and this God that is there, wherever it is. This. And in contemplating this God, he began to receive what? Comfort and consolation. To say, you know what? I will trust in him. You know what? I will keep believing. I remember, again, remembering Jairus' daughter. The our son 49. Jairus went to Jesus. The daughter was sick at that particular point in time. He said, please come. Come and lay your hand on my daughter that she may be healed. Obviously, Jesus started that journey, but then we had the story of the woman with the issue of blood that stopped Jesus and she received her healing. But in the process, Jairus got a message to say, you know what? Your daughter is dead. Leave the master alone. The Bible says immediately Jesus had it. He told Jairus, fear not. Keep on believing. No matter where we are and the challenges that we face, the Bible says, keep on believing. He is there. He is there. And that is what we see here as we contemplate on this Psalm 139. Remember, we are still studying the scripture. We started by saying that, why do we sing? Okay, in fact, when you read through the scripture, you will read again and again and again in the scripture where he encourages us to sing unto the Lord. In fact, maybe we should read one or two of these because I think this will be very, very helpful for us. We are talking about why do we sing? Why? Why do we sing? So let's read a couple of scripture that tells us why we'll sing. I'm just going to run through this. Psalm 28 verse 7 says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, rejoiced, and with my song will I praise him. He said, the Lord is my strength and my shield, and my heart trusts in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and my song and with my song will I pray. Why do we praise God? We praise God because the Lord, because of who the Lord is, and because of who the Lord is to us. He is my strength. He is my shield. My heart trusts in him. Psalm 40 verse 3 says, And he had put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. And we can go on and go on. You know, verse, chapter 48 verse 1 says that, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. In the city of our God and in the mountain of his holiness. When we begin to contemplate, just like the psalmist did. I mean, you know, the, the book of Psalm is actually the hymn book of the Jews. Okay, we read it, but they sing it for the most part. It's a song. It's a hymn book. So it is it is wonderful to be able to put this word to song, to contemplate on the glory of God, the power of God, to contemplate on, him, on the goodness of God, on the mercy of God, to contemplate on the grace of God. Great is your mercy towards me. We can, we can talk about the steadfast love of our God never ceases. This mercy never comes to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O God. It's a wonderful thing to just contemplate, just like the psalmist did, on the goodness of God and to be able to put that into some, but let's go back to our Psalm 139. So you are there. But the other thing that we see here is when he was saying that you know me. You know me. You know, oftentimes people may misunderstand us, mm -hmm. oftentimes people may afflict us, things may come. But the psalmist rested on two realities. Number one, you are there. Number two, you know me. You know me. He said, let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me start from the beginning. He said, Oh Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. You know me. Lord, you know my challenges. Lord, you know my weaknesses. You know my fear. The Bible says that we should cast our cares upon the Lord. 
for he cares for us. The Bible says that in nothing be anxious, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. He knows us. But this God that knows us totally loves us unreservedly. Look, it is, it is useless for us to try to hide away from God because he knows us. But God knows us. He knows our friend. He knows our weaknesses. What God requires of us is honesty. What God requires of us is openness, the desire to want to serve him, the desire to want to obey him, the desire to want to please him. And as we, as we desire that, and as we release that, the Lord will grant the strength. Look, the Lord has not asked us to, to follow him and to obey him in our own strength. No, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not upon your own understanding, the proverb says. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. The psalmist says, even though I pass through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So number one, he is there. Number two, he knows me. I can rest in that reality. Listen, we have to come to the point where we know that we know that we know that he is there. It has to be something that is alive to us that God is with me. I am not alone. Okay, I am not alone. God is here. He knows me. The Bible says that every single strand of hair upon our head are numbered and none of them will fall to the ground without the knowledge of God. Understand that is the one that created the trillions and trillions and trillions of stars and galaxies in the universe. That is your God. The Bible says that he spoke, let there be and there was. It was the one, look, the universe is stupendous. This universe, the universe is overwhelming, but your God created it and he broke, he didn't break sweat when he did it. He just spoke and it came into being. The universe, the expanding universe. I wish I can stand here and talk to you about the stupendous beauty and complexity and glory of the universe. But God created it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This marvelous thing did not come out of Big Bang. In fact, we have a song that we've not shared yet that said it's not Big Bang. It is God who created them all. <laughs> Hallelujah. In fact, the song has been there for a couple of months now. I've not been able to share it yet. Maybe one day the Lord will help us to share it. That is your God. He knows you. Understand that he is God. And we must desire to worship him, to serve him no matter what. Our desire is to please him. And our desire is to trust in the Lord with all our heart and not to lean upon our own understanding. So that is what this song is all about. And that is what the Maranatha original song series is all about. It's, it, it's Bible put to melody. It is Bible musical where we take the word of God and where we sing it so that we can meditate on it. Remember, it's one of the way you study. And if you've seen I think I've done two so far. There was one I did, how I show you, how I did one of the 30 second music. Remember, we have the Maranatha song, original song series, which we've now shared 50, but we also have the 30 second praise, which we have 24. I mean, we, do, we don't do those ones regularly. We just do them as the Lord grant the grace. And we had 24 of those at, at a blast, really. And I remember the night one, I did show you how I did it. It was from Revelation chapter four. And also, I think not too long ago, I also showed how I did you know, a couple of the other ones. In fact, there was one I did that we have not even finished that song called Your Majesty. And I, I, I think I posted that recently, how I showed you how I went to Psalm and I used verses one and four and I used that to form a verse in that song. I, we've, not, we've not finished that song. Well, I've not tried to finish it, but essentially it's a way of, of, of just meditating on the scripture and when I sit down to do this song I actually have the Bible in front of me I'm reading the story I'm putting them to music at times like I said in some of those things there are times I just tap on the table and I sing along there are times where I have music and and there's something maybe I should talk about this actually because again like I said this is a way 
for us to learn you know somebody can say you know you are in uk and you have opportunity and things like let me tell you something actually when i started this song i was in nigeria in fact couple of the first few songs that we released on the platform of Maranatha original song series were song I already had 20, 30 years ago before I came to UK. For example, the first song, Praise the Lord, My Soul, Praise the Lord. And it was my son that anchored that, that song. That song, that, that was the very first song we released on the platform of Maranatha. That song, I had it almost 30 years ago and it was it was a praise medley it has first four song praise the lord unto us the the child is born god is good and then jesus you are king now the last of that series was the new one i added to it but the first three in that in that uh melody actually i've always had them in fact when i was doing my youth service which was <laughs> many many years ago we were going to release a song uh the the christian youth service christian uh, choir we are going to release a song and I actually gave them three of my songs for them to use we never get to use them actually okay so I already had those songs I didn't have the, the things that I had yes things is better than what it used to be use what you have it's useless for us to say I cannot do something because I don't have an opportunity the Bible says that God will not commit greater things into our hands if we are not faithful with the things we have now you remember the parable of that talent servants were given different talent but what the guy that had one went to hide it he was supposed to invest it no matter what god gives us invest it in you you use what god has given you i didn't know i could do 50 songs or more than 50 songs but yet i started using i didn't have i didn't even have laptop not to talk about a microphone in those days okay the song just came now obviously we have different gifts and different talent your own talent and gift may not be singing but what i'm saying is that god has given you something and god has given you something to bless the church with to bless the church with you nobody's a parasite the bible says that the church grows by that which every joint supply yours may not be singing yours may be may be serving in in different ways or different portion but what Whatever way God has, whatever gift or talent God has given you, use it. And that is the secret. And that is, this is where it all came from. So, so uh, praise the Lord, my soul, praise the Lord, the first one. In fact, the second one, blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Again, obviously, all these songs are basically scripture put to melody. They are basically Bible music. The blessed be the name of the Lord is just the story of Daniel. It was when Daniel prayed and God revealed the, the you know the dream of the king so that they would not be killed along with the other wise men. That was the song that that uh, Daniel started singing, Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Wisdom and might are his. It changes the season. It revealed the deep and secret things. And obviously, I added other things from other scripture to it. And that was the way I started singing. And by the way, the thing is this, and I've always said this, I'm not a professional. My songs are not perfect. But there are some of them that have a lot of mistakes in them. Okay, okay fine. If I'm a professional, I want to do it perfectly even even though i started you know some people want things to be perfect before they can share it or before you no know, you do your best that is the most important thing but the thing is that as you engage yourself you develop okay you develop i started with with just singing tapping tables in fact even the maranata original song series i remember the first two or three that we did i remember the stress that went with it but today the lord had granted the the the, the grace to be able to do it in a better way even with that i'm, I'm only much more aware of how much one can still do but look my primary calling is not to it's not to be a musician okay I look at this music ministry as a um, as a part of the teaching ministry that the Lord has given us. But what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that whatever God has given you, okay, don't the Bible says we should not disdain the days of two, little beginning. You sow it, sow it in the life of the people. If it is one verse, share it. Listen to me. One of the reasons I share things is not so that we'll know, you know, you can talk. No, 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 no. Whatever God has given me, I want to give it to you. And one of the things I realize is that as you give, it is given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking together and running over. As I share with other people, 
so that they can be blessed with what God has blessed me with. I realize that I am blessed. Listen, all this teaching on this platform, I listen to them. These messages are greater than us. I need those words just as much as you need them. And I'm not teaching them because I am perfect, but I'm teaching them because it is the it is the calling of God, but I know I also need to drink from that same source. And that is the way we grow. So praise the Lord. I just thought I will share that with you today, that Psalm 139, from which we've brought this song, okay, it has actually helped us to be able to contemplate on the glory and the might and the goodness of God. And as we contemplate, we receive consolation. We receive comfort. Understand today that He knows you. He knows you. God knows me. And you can say, He knows me. God knows you. And you can say, He knows me. And He is there. He is there. The Bible says that He will not allow anything that is bigger than us to come across our path. He said He will be there. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So this word is a word of encouragement today. And if you are listening to me tonight and you are not born again, listen to me. These are days of salvation. A time is coming when no man will be able to be saved. But today is a day of salvation. You can bow down your head and ask God to come in and bless you and save you. Just invite Jesus. There's no other name given among men whereby we might be saved. Just bow down your head. Accept the gift of salvation from his hand. Believe in his blood and his cross. Confess him as your Lord and Savior. And the Bible says, as many as call upon him shall be saved. Do it today and you will not regret it.